Hey my friends! This time I have an animative image to video workflow with a start and end image. This is done by sparse control. I personally have never used but always wanted it, since it is much more direct than the methods across IP adapter that you usually use for that. I know it's a little late, but better late than never. And maybe it is of use for some. It is of course not as perfect as LTX or Cock video or all the other new models, but for animative it gives a great result. It is not done with one workflow here, by the way. We need two. This method here needs a combination of this uh, sparse control workflow and the super mega badass upscaler from Banner Doco. This is what makes it looking nice then. This workflow is as usual as simple as it can be. It is very similar to the prompt traveling workflow that I have shown before. Um, we will talk about this upscaling bit here at a later point. For now, this here is the workflow. And this bit here. And the final video is then done by frame interpolation. This is upscaling. As told, upscaling is a very special chapter. We will talk about it at a later point. First, let's dive in into the basics. My hardware is uh, still a 4060 XT with 16 GB VRAM. And you minimum need a graphics card with 12 GB VRAM because we have the ultimate upscale node here um, in the first workflow and also here the super mega badass upscaler uses ultimate upscale SD and I was never able to get this one to work with 8 GB VRAM. So let's dive in. It is a workflow for animate diff version 3. As you can see we have a start image and an end image. The prompt. We have here the Florence group or you can use a very simple prompt here with this one. Um, to connect it, make this one active. So the prompt, simple prompt box is active. And when you go from output into here, then the Florence group is active. The Florence group is nice because it gives you quite a bit of a prompt here, lots of content. And then you just need to refine it a bit. I have also done experiments without any prompt at all, it gave also some results, but I find Florence gives a better result. Before I forget, the Florence um, is a node that analyzes the input image, it is connected to the first image, and writes a prompt for it then. It also replaces the strings regarding to have a video prompt here, image turns to video here, for example. Um, this my key note here, the order is this way. So first comes this prompt and then this prompt here. And this gets combinated and goes then into the pipeline here in the text and code. Positive prompt. The settings. Here is where you define the length of the video. Don't go too long. Um, sparse control does not like too long videos but a frame of frame length of 32, that should be fine. 48 also somehow works. The animate diff group is where the magic happens. Here comes the motion. Keep your hands away from the context options. Um, there are also no um, LoRa's involved. Version 3 doesn't work with motion LoRa's and doesn't work with uh, the context LoRa, the context length LoRa. So this is just the loader and the context options. Um, version 3 requires um, a special, let me pull this bigger, a special adapter. And you can put it right before the animate diff loader or right after the animate diff loader. And with this load loader, we have the way to influence the strength. And that is behind the loader. Normally, I would put it here at the loaders, but here belongs. Uh, this node here belongs to the animate diff. You can also adjust the strength clip with this node. So lots of values to toy around and to influence the result. Here comes the sparse control group. 
and is basically some kind of a control net. And that's why we have an apply advanced control net node here at the end. Um, it has here, let me pull it bigger. Ah, this new design makes me nuts. Um, we have the sparse control RGB checkpoint, which we need to load for the sparse control. And then it grabs the input image and the end image and batches them together into the sparse control node here. And then it continues into the apply advanced control net node and everything gets mixed together. And then it goes into the K sampler. So for the images, as told, we have a batch images node here. The first image is the start image and the second image is the end image. You can also work with just the start image. Let me put off the end image. But then you have to reconnect here the image input to go directly here from the resize image into the RGB sparse control instead of here. So this is now not longer connected. The batch images is not longer connected to the workflow. So that just the start image would be active. Let's undo this change. Let me put this on again. And we go again from the batch images into the RGB sparse control. This is how you um, enable the end image or disable the end image as you like. Sometimes it can give a better result when you have an end image, sometimes not. Toy around. Um, this control net group here, as told, belongs to the sparse control. It um, connects the clip and the text together with um, this sparse control. And then it goes into the case sampler. And here we are already at the K sampler. The usual stuff. Um, I have chosen here the DPM plus plus 2M and 25 steps. And the seed fixed or increment randomize to your needs. Here for toying around to find out the best methods and settings, I have it at fixed. So back to the images here, I have a resize image node here. This also controls the second resize image, so we have the same size for both. Um, stay as close as possible to 512 to 512. This is animate diff. It is trained at the size and also the stable diffusion um, checkpoints are trained at 512 pixels. When you go bigger, then you will have very bad results. And this leads us already to the upscaling issue. I have here for um, demonstration purposes and also maybe somebody wants it implemented here in upscaling with ultimate upscale. And the purpose when you have it in the workflow is to be as close as possible to the video that you upscale. But in this case, um, it gives a not so good result because the input video is not so good. And this is, where, is the point where the super mega badass upscaler comes in handy. It will make a much better video out of this input. Let's have a look. This is the original workflow. First, let me do some cleanup. We need to load a video here and the checkpoints and files here. Control net doesn't fit at the moment. It throws red everywhere. I, for example, prefer to have the ultra sharp here. I don't own the other. Uh, control net checkpoint. I have another path here. Same here. Appear at the plus. Where are you? Here are you. I touch model. This is here. And then there was here the colors animated we have in the other workflow the analog madness version 7. And then as told, let's load the video here. So we have loaded the preview version, and this is because of two reasons. The preview versions has 8 frames per second. 
this is what we want, not the 24. And the preview video is smaller. Animate diff as told, stay as close as possible to the 512 pixel size. And this is what we have loaded here, the preview version. It is smaller in size and smaller in number of frames that we need to progress. What we need to do before we continue is to grab this frame interpolation here. Let's copy it over. Frame interpolation, and then we put it here in between. So this is now the 15 frames here is wrong anyways. Let's make it 24. We have an input video with 8 frames per second and want to produce a video with 24 frames per second, and this is done by multiply by 3. So this workflow here should work now. I hope, fingers crossed. And now, look at this beauty. I have never thought that this is possible with animative, this quality. Just to compare with the original workflow, Let's put these side and side. This is this one. What a difference. 24 frames per second and lots and lots of details. Great. And this is why I said we need two workflows here. This upscaling here uses the same control net, the same animated diff instance and tries to be as close as possible to the input video, while the Super Mega Vettas upscaler starts basically from scratch by an IP adapter. The IP adapter analyzes the image and it alters the video and improves it by a lot. So this is much better, this result here. You may have noticed that I have, meanwhile, um, added here a master upscaling group. As told, I do not recommend to work with this upscaling. I want to keep it in the workflow, nevertheless. Maybe somebody has a result that he wants really, really to keep as close as possible to the generated video here. So just turn on master upscaler. And this is in the pipeline again. For the generation with Super Mega Vatas upscaler, please use this frame rate 8 video here, the preview video. Safe output is here also. I have turned it false. I was told it is in the workflow, but not recommended. Use the Super Mega Vatas upscaler here. You see now why. Another trick at the end, when you are curious how the noodles are going here, as you can see here, when the nodes are disabled, then you can see much clearer where the noodles are connected. So when you are in trouble here, here for example, turn off the nodes, turn off the groups, and then you see the connections much better, like here. And that was basically it. Have fun with this workflow.